I get what the Steelers are doing. They believe in continuity. I, someone, I'm on the record, I think Tom and the Steelers are going to be back on top this year, a Super Bowl threat, but I wouldn't have taken him off the hot seat. I, I would have left him there. I don't have a problem with it. I don't think it would have made any difference. Uh, I think his mindset is a mindset that I share, a lot of people share, which we all know about the game of football. You eat what you kill in football, one. So everyone talks about pressure and the external motivation that comes from pressure. How about the inner motivation that I'm just trying to be committed to my game to be my best, no matter what those circumstances look like? So his dedication to his craft, to his own words, uh, he said in an interview, I walk around with motivation. I walk around with this chip. So I don't need to lose two of my star players to feel more motivated. He's already fully committed and fully motivated. So I don't think it would have made a difference in terms of what the outside thought of him and his circumstances, because it's about how he wakes up every day. If he goes 5-11 and 11 this year, he's probably gone anyways, whether he had an extension or not. I love pairing him up with Big Ben, but I'm with you. I think the Steelers go 10-6, and 11-5. They win the North. They got all the noise out, right? Le'Veon Bell's out. Antonio Brown is out. This is the first time since Tomlin and Big Ben have been together that there's, there's doubt on what they can do. I think being a veteran team, that's going to drive them to just focus in just a little bit more in training camp, just put in a little bit more work, it's going to pay off on the field. I, I like that they pair them together, but I think it's more just about, hey, we're in this together, let's make it happen. But I think they're going to have a great season. Yeah, I'm with you guys. I think they're going to win this division. And I will tell you this, the interesting thing to me is I think over the last couple of years, Mike Tomlin, some of it's his own fault, some of it's the players they have, I think he's been emasculated. I think there's been a question about his authority in that own, in his own locker room. Yeah. And I think it's come from the players. And one of the things he says all the time, and I can confirm this through a bunch of players that have played for him, I'm going to put up with it until I can replace it. Well, guess what? You can't replace Antonio Brown. Mm. Like, he's not from this planet. He's a freak of nature when it comes to what he can do on a football field. So you've essentially acquiesced your authority to a couple of players. They've removed those players, and this is the Pittsburgh Steelers management saying, hey, you know what? You are in charge. You have authority. We give you this extension. Go exercise that authority. That's what they're doing here for, for Mike Tomlin, and I think it's a great power play for him. In my lifetime, there's been Chuck Knoll, there's been Bill Cowher, and there's been Mike Tomlin. <laughs> That's it, right? And so I think they've, they, I think they've reestablished there's the, the new sheriff in town is the same one that you've had for a while, and we've empowered him. We've given him a vote of confidence. I, I, and it may be necessary for them to do that, and that may be the final piece of the puzzle for them coming into this year. Big Ben and Mike Tomlin are on the same level in terms of comfort and contract extension. And now they need, and maybe this is a signal they're on the same accord. We've married these two guys. These are our two leaders. And, and so, again, I don't know if I would have done it, but I get the thinking. And, and it may very well work in terms of, because if he is on a shorter contract, if they don't give him the extension, there might be a handful of guys in that locker room that's like, hey, man, he's kind of lamed up. And, you know, he may not be here next year by giving him this extension it fully uh, validates his authority. Yeah, I, I mean, look, you talk about him being emasculated. I also think he's being misrepresented. Even in the media, our portrayal of him, we have to remind ourselves who Mike Tomlin is in terms of win percentage, second most of all active head coaches, in terms of wins, third of all active head coaches, been to two Super Bowls, won a Super Bowl. You talk about his resume He's not the one to tell you that, but you should remind yourself who you're talking to. And if that were any of us, second best at what we're doing right now behind Belichick, and someone said, you know what? We're going to add one more year to your contract, or we're going to not add a year, and you're on the hot seat. If you're that good, if you climb that pyramid of success to that level, you think that matters? Mm -hmm. I know that I will always get the fruit of my labor based on my greatness, and it's going to be consistent. Here, here's where I would push back, though, Marcellus. Because the Steelers are such a unique organization, three head coaches in 60-some-odd <laughs> years, all of them have success. The, the Steelers' reputation is that it's the Steelers' organization, that the front office down is leading that. The Patriots are, Belichick r runs that. And so I, I think among NFL players and I think among NFL media people, it's, it's awesome what Mike Tomlin has done. But now I think he has a real chance to prove himself 
of being more than just the Pittsburgh Steelers organization and system, he can really put his stamp on his coaching. Here's the other thing with this organization that I think is interesting. You talked about how now they're tied together, he and Roethlisberger, mm. until both their contracts end. Both of these guys are coming under scrutiny or have come under scrutiny. So it's one of those situations where you're looking at each other going, we're in this thing together. You realize we're married. We're tied at the hip. <laughs> and Arranged like, marriage, if, too. <laughs> right. And if we don't have success. So, I mean, I, I think there's a, a bit of where this bonds these two together <laughs> because they both have some reputation that needs to be healed, if you will, from the, from the media standpoint. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it will happen, in my opinion, because those voices are out of law. I think we underestimated how much of a cancer A.B. had been at times because we like what he does on social media and he's such a great player. But I think having that noise out, how, how many times have we ever had a team like lose a wide receiver and it's really mattered so much to their win-loss record when they have, still have a Hall of Fame quarterback and possibly a Hall of Fame coach? Mm. It doesn't matter as much as people think. I think they're tying them together, saying, look, you guys are in this now together. Make this happen. They added the, you know, their, their middle linebacker. Their defense will be good. Their offense is still going to be good. I love the move all in together, make it happen. But have you changed the common denominator from a lot of the Steelers' issues and woes? Ben Roethlisberger and his leadership, hey, you can remove an A-B and you say, okay, now this is my locker room. I respect that. But when adversity hits, your true colors show. Has he changed his, his colors? Has he changed his ma mental makeup? Well, fine this year, but he's listening, right? He had the, the little outing with his, right. with his guys. That he, was he, back. He canceled his radio appearances for the yeah. season. He's been nothing but respectful in public. But remember this, too. Big Ben has never really had to be the leader on the Steelers. They've been led by their defense forever. They've been led by their veteran offensive linemen, by Heinz Ward, by all these other guys. He is now learning how to be the leader of that team. It's now upon him, and maybe this was a growing experience the last couple of years and how to do that. I think as it relates to Big Ben, I'll make a relationship analogy in terms of, because I've never understood why Big Ben and Tomlin haven't been lockstep, because I think their personalities match. Both of them are gamblers. Both of them are hyper-aggressive in the style of play they want to do. And, and, and again, if you remember anything about Big Ben, his reputation, particularly early on before he was married, he's like, the brothers love Big Ben. <laughs> and, and right, so right. it's never made sense. But, but it does make sense in this respect. A lot of times I feel like because there were too many voices, it's like, it, it's like when you're dating more than one person. Mm -hmm. And it's not until you, like, really zero in on a single person that you discover, like, oh, damn, this is what I should have been doing all along. Mm. I thought it was better when I was, you know, right. juggling this and that and mm. juggling A.B.'s feelings and juggling Le'Veon Bell, blah, blah, blah. Now it's just going to be Big Ben and Mike Tomlin, and I think it's a marriage that's going to work. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show, and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak For Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.